Hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. I'm Moose and today we have another knife review. And this one is kind of a classic. The Kershaw Knockout. This is the Kershaw Knockout. With the black blade and the OD green handle. So I'm going to read off some specs and then we'll get into the knife. Uh, the overall length of the knife is 7.8 inches. The blade length is three and a quarter inches. Sweet blade. Uh, the thickness of the blade is 0.12 inches. The overall handle length is 4.62 inches. And the weight of the knife is 3.8 ounces. Um, so looking at the blade, you can see it is a drop point. Uh, kind of a more tactical looking drop point blade. Um, it's really a nice knife. Uh, it is a hollow grind. It's kind of hard to tell. It almost looks like a flat grind. Um, but there is a shallow hollow grind here. There's a swedge up top. And the cool thing with this knife, it's, it's a little bit more of a wider profile on the blade. But you have this huge belly. Just an absolute huge belly which would be good for rocking up until you get to the uh, finger guard slash flipper, uh, but easily has a lot of belly, uh, would possibly be good at skinning because of that, um, but it just gives an awesome look to the knife. Uh, the knife has dual thumb studs uh, for deployment, as well as the um, flipper. It is a spring assist uh, opening it uses Kershaw's speed safe mechanism that works fantastic it just flies out of there has kick super smooth the, uh, I believe it's brown phosphorus washers um, so really nice the blade has a black coating not sure specifically what it is but it holds up really well uh, and the blade is made of Sandvik 14c 28n blade steel so pretty awesome so moving into the handle, uh, the handle is a OD green. It's made of a anodized aluminum, uh, which gives it you know a smoother metallic feel. But they have some of these stylized grooves milled into uh, the front scale to add a little bit of traction and and look. Uh, there's some nice uh, contouring and choiling here, uh, a slight divot on the back for the thumb to rest, and the finger guard really kind of locks the finger. Your forefinger in there boom um, as you can see we got holes for the pocket clip which is one of the um, better features of the knife uh, that really sold this for me and it is a four-way position but uh, positionable uh, pocket clip tip up tip down left right uh, the other thing that's fantastic about the clip is it's dark a darker clip which I kind of prefer over a satin finish clip but it's deep carry um, and for a big knife like this that you want to kind of keep, you know, keep a low profile with just because big knives usually scare people, it's nice that this sits so deep in the pocket. Um, so pretty awesome. It's a great little clip design, and I like it a lot. That being said, the other cool thing with this knife, because it's anodized aluminum, it's fairly light, and they've took in another thing by knocking out this uh, kind of lock bar thing. I forgot specifically what it's called, but maybe I'll remember it in a sec. But the other thing, it's a very, very slim profile knife. Like, this thing just slips into your pocket, and it just fits right against your side. It's so thin. And for a knife this size, it's pretty, pretty interesting that they were able to do that. So, looking at it more, we have a knocked out section of the f uh, handle scale, and then they put in a stainless steel lock bar insert, uh, as well as cutting out part of that to lighten the weight, um, giving you know almost two different references to the knocking out of the knockout. So we got that knockout there, and then they knocked out this section of the frame and put in a stainless steel. Operates just like a mix of a frame lock and a liner lock and it just works great so pretty awesome and you just gotta love this knife you just hold it and you just feel cool Ugh, so cool 
Um, but super smooth, easy, and just awesome. So that being said, uh, this knife is also offered in a variety of different variations. The most basic variation is just a black aluminum handle scale with a satin finish blade. Same material, Sandvik steel. Um, they also offer it in a, I think, a higher end model with a brown handles, handles and then an LMAX blade steel. And the price on that will be higher, but for this model, I think it was a 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, of course, price fluctuates, so. Um, but I think the more basic model with the black and the satin finish blade is around 50 or 60 dollars, so. But I like the look of this one. So, comparing it to some other knives, uh, this is kind of a medium uh, size fixed blade, maybe even a large for some people. So, we're going to compare it to the Cold Steel Finwolf which is pretty excellent. We have one of my all-time favorite knives, the Bird Raven 2. Absolutely love this knife. And we'll do the HK Axis. So as you can see, um, these are all kind of larger, medium-sized fixed blades. We lined it up with this line right there. Um, Blade length wise, they're all relatively the same. The HK Access is the longest. Uh, handle length, the actual handle of the HK Access is about the same as the Knockout, as well as the Fin Wolf and the Bird Raven 2. Looking at the thickness of the blade. Um, it is a slightly thinner blade than some of these other knives, so the H and K axis is thicker, but as you can see, the handle on the knockout is thinner than the HK axis. The Finwolf uh, looks like the blade's about the same thickness, uh, and the knockout handle is slightly thinner than that. And then the Bird Raven 2. Now the Bird Raven blade thickness is slightly thicker than the Knockout, but the handle, once again, is thicker. Um, so one of the impressive things, again, is the fact that it's so slim, but they still have the speed safe mechanism in there. And so they're able to mill out a tiny pocket in there and put it in there and then put a plate. So it's pretty good. Last thing is the ugly brown glove test. So we have this and boom, the flipper flies out excellently. With that, the lock is disengaged easily and yeah, works great. Um, the only thing is there is no jimping. So without that finger guard and that choil, that's the only thing kind of locking it in the hand as well as this contouring here but there's nothing on top for the thumb to grip onto if I'm wearing these cloth gloves. But the finger guard works really well. And that belly, gotta love the belly. Gotta love the belly. All right, so that being said, passes the ugly brown glove test. I give it 85%, maybe 88 pass. Uh, really good, love the deep carry. Uh, definitely a classic, one of Kershaw's best knives. Uh, I'll put a link to the video of the Four Horsemen. I consider this one of Kershaw's best knives as well as four other knives that are very similar. Um, both or all of them are assisted openings. Um, so check out the eye in the upper right hand corner to check that and other related videos. Um, but definitely one of Kershaw's all time best. Uh, so that being said, check out all my other videos. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you own one or if you have any thoughts or if there's anything I've missed forgot to mention you could add that into the bottom i appreciate that uh, other than that stay tuned for other knife and gear reviews and i'll see you guys outside thank you